Right now on Denver 7 News at 7 o'clock on Local 3, CU Boulder is stepping up its response to sexual assaults. The effort today after multiple incidents on campus so far this semester. Aurora is making way for a new top cop after mismanagement forced the last police chief out. The process starting today to decide who's best for the job. You need to hide from the, the wind and run from the water. Tropical Storm Ian strengthens to a hurricane overnight and now it has its sights set on Florida. The preparations underway right now as people brace for a turbulent week. And the Denver Broncos beat the San Francisco 49ers on home turf. Mm -hmm. So why was the crowd booing at times? Yeah, it wasn't exactly the prettiest game, but no. it's a win. They're right. two and one. We'll take it. They're, they're getting it done. So, uh, yeah, they're on their way. Uh, We're going to hear from Russell Wilson about that. He, he always spins it pretty well. So, yes, yeah. Mr. Positivity. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on this Monday morning. I'm Brian Sanders. And I'm Nicole Brady. Lisa Hidalgo getting us outside today. A beautiful start to fall this weekend, Lisa. And, I feel uh, like I do continues. the same thing. I try to spin like a big monster snowstorm mm -hmm. and tell you how yeah. great and pretty yeah. it's going to be. We right? need it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no snow yet on the forecast. In fact, this week is going to be pretty warm, gorgeous in the mountains, clear skies right now there in Winter Park. It was a busy weekend in the high country. Now as you're getting the kids out the door ready for school this week, it's a nice start. 40s and 50s here within the next hour, hour and a half. We're going to be in the low 80s by the time they get home today, so it will be a pretty warm afternoon. We're typically upper 70s this time of year. Denver, though, a high of 83. Highlands Ranch are going to be at about 80. Low 80s near Fort Collins and Greeley and 60s and 70s again for the high country. Now the mountains might pick up an isolated storm or two today. Very limited. We'll get a few building clouds there. Dry here in Denver today. Slight chance for an isolated storm tomorrow. So we'll take a closer look at that chance for rain this week and I'll show you when more fall light -like conditions are going to settle in coming up. We're still dealing with the one crash here this morning. It's out in Aurora on I-225 on the northbound side right by Mississippi. It's off to the left shoulder. It's a little odd for them to move it to the left shoulder. Take a look from uh, just a moment ago, Air Tracker 7. So you see the one, two, three vehicles and there's a motorcycle officer right behind it. So the crash happened right here on the left side. A couple of them moved over to the left shoulder. That actually car was over in the right shoulder, moved over to the left, which is really odd to have that happen. So everybody's slowing down, even though all three lanes are open. Some of these folks should be moving over or obviously slowing down significantly. You can see the drive time right now still hanging tough at around a half an hour on that northbound side. So that's where you'll see that heavy stop and go traffic. If you live in Aurora and join 225, join it from Mississippi or Alameda and you'll save yourself some time. The rest of the drive looks OK for the most part. Just starting to see traffic build up in those usual spots, including to that north side of town. Well, we are following two breaking stories out of Russia this morning. Seven kids are among the dead after a school mm -hmm. shooting. This happened about 600 miles east of Moscow. Two teachers and two security guards were also killed by a gunman wearing a swastika t-shirt. The gunman then killed himself. No word yet on a motive. Also breaking overnight, there have been attacks at Russian military recruitment offices. This comes after President Putin ordered the activation of 300,000 civilians for his invasion of Ukraine. And people have been protesting this attempt to draft civilians. Uh, in one situation, a uh, conscript shot a recruitment officer and there was another situation where protesters uh, set a building on fire with Molotov cocktails. Earlier this morning, Tropical Storm Ian was upgraded to a hurricane. Florida could uh, be issuing evacuation orders today. In fact, much of the peninsula is already under mm -hmm. a state of emergency. Yeah, forecasters are still working out Ian's exact path. They say people across the state of Florida, though, should prepare for the worst from heavy rain to dangerous storm surge. We may end up having a hurricane that uh, reduces in strength as it comes onshore, but that envelope of water is still going to be a cat four storm surge because you just can't make that go away. This is video from Tampa where people were already loading up sandbags and getting ready to board up homes. Tampa's mayor said the city has also been preparing its stormwater system to accommodate Ian. The state is partnering with FEMA to have resources ready. 
All of this comes after Hurricane Fiona ripped through Canada's eastern seaboard, uh, making landfall in Nova Scotia on Saturday. Fierce winds and a storm surge caused most of the damage in Newfoundland. You see here mm -hmm. hundreds of thousands of people lost power and some coastal homes were actually dragged wow. into the ocean. And in Puerto Rico, nearly half of the island is still in the dark a week after Hurricane Fiona hit. Puerto Rican leaders say one major concern is a hospital in Cabo Rojo, which has been running on generator power since the storm. About 80% though of the island now has access to clean water. Back here in Colorado, it was a deadly weekend in Aurora. Two men were shot Sunday morning at a shopping center on South Chambers. One of them died. The other is in the hospital with serious injuries. No one has been arrested. Aurora police also shot and killed a suspected car thief. This happened Saturday at East Alameda, just over the city limits into Denver. Denver's acting police chief says the Aurora officers pulled over a car with two people inside. One of them ran and then pointed a gun at police who then shot him. The other man stayed in the car and was arrested. This all comes as the two candidates to lead the Aurora Police Department will meet with city leaders for the first time today. Denver 7's Brandon Richard has more on these two men and the tough job they'll be coming into, Brandon. Yeah, Nicole, and whoever becomes Aurora's next police chief has their work cut out for them. They'll have to take charge of a department that's come under enormous scrutiny and one that faces a range of problems. And here over the next three days, the two finalists will have an opportunity to explain how they would address all of those issues. And we are just down to two finalists now after a third finalist withdrew their name from consideration last week. So the two remaining finalists now are Scott Ebner and David Franklin. Ebner has spent 27 years with the New Jersey State Police. Franklin is chief of staff of the Albuquerque Police Department. If one of them is selected as Aurora's new police chief, they'll take over a department, again, plagued by problems and under a consent decree following the death of Elijah McClain in police custody. Last year, the Colorado Attorney General found APD engaged in racially biased policing and excessive force. And you can see why that would be a problem in a city as diverse as Aurora, where people of color make up more than half of the city's population. Now, in April of this year, city officials fired police chief Vanessa Wilson after just two years for failing to effectively manage the department and build morale. Today, the two men hoping to replace her will tour the police department sites and meet with employees. Tomorrow, they'll answer questions before a community panel, meet with faith and business leaders, and hold a meet and greet with citizens. And on Wednesday, the mayor and members of the city council will have an opportunity to interview the two finalists along with other city officials. City leaders here in Aurora hope to hire a new police chief by the end of this year. We're live in Aurora this morning. Brandon Richard, Denver 7. Thank you, Brandon. Well, your Denver Broncos found a way once again mm -hmm. to squeak out a win, this time against the 49ers. An odd score, 11 to 10, mm -hmm. which if you do the math is hard to figure out. But at Empower Field last night, they, they got it done eventually. Mm -hmm. They're 2-1 and one on the season now, tied atop the AFC West Division with the Chiefs. But it was the second straight game. Fans booed the team at times. Thank goodness for the defensive plays because the offense was dismal. Uh, most of the game, they did come up with some big conversions down the stretch, but quarterback Russell Wilson seemed unfazed by the performance and was proud the team persevered. Obviously, go against a great team like that. Um, we're, we're still all learning each other. There's a whole new system and everything. Everybody's coming together, but there's so much great greatness in store, and I can't wait for it. But just watching our defense battle, 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 just against a really good offense and then giving us a chance, and everybody just believed in each other. That was, that's what football is all about. Yep, schedule turns up a notch this week. They get into some divisional rivals. The Broncos play the Raiders next in Las Vegas on Sunday. Kickoff is at 2.25 p.m. A group of drillers land on an asteroid to try to redirect it from the Earth. That was the plot right. of Armageddon, if you remember that late 90s movie. Mm -hmm. Bruce, Bruce Willis, Willis of course. Ben Affleck, yes. really Steve breakout Buscemi, role for him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Buscemi was in that, yeah. Uh, well, NASA is actually going to try to do something similar in real life. Amazing here. This is the DART spacecraft launching last November. Uh, some file video here. Tonight, it's going to crash into an asteroid, and several CU scientists will be watching. 
we don't have a good understanding of what the structure of the asteroid is like. And so we're going to run something into it, but we don't know, is it going to make a little crater? Is it going to make a big crater? Is it going to, you know, completely reshape the asteroid or just, you know, make a little dimple in it? That's the big question. Mm -hmm. We will find out. Impact is set for 514 Mountain Time tonight. Dart has a live streaming camera on board so you can see the impact live. And there's a smaller satellite following Dart that will send more pictures back in the coming weeks. And we want an Aerosmith soundtrack for it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, RTD riders, 28 routes are going to be changing soon. Traffic expert Jason Luber joins us because uh, these changes don't take place until January, but yeah. uh, they're coming out about it now. Yeah, because you have to have two, several meetings, and mm -hmm. these two meetings are today and tomorrow. So they're right now, right here, mm -hmm. and so you won't get caught off guard. These January service changes meetings are today and tomorrow, and the January service changes will impact both bus riders and train routes across the city. Here's an example of the changes. The 10 bus that goes through East Denver and Aurora is being expanded, but the CNF trains, uh, they're being discontinued. Are, are these a time for people to express their concerns about any proposed changes that might be coming up? Can they tell you what they think and, and what they would like to see changed? This is the right time for people to come on in and let us know what they're thinking about their specific routes, about their specific train routes or bus routes. And of course, they can tell us if they've got concerns. They can tell us what's working, um, where they'd like to see adjustments. Now, she also told me that when riders express their opinions at these service change meetings, the comments go right to the board of directors and the meetings are online today. And tomorrow you can get the schedule on the RTD website, rtd-denver.com. It's also where you can see the list of proposed changes. Hmm. All right. Thank you, Jason. Well, winter is coming maybe sooner than we would like as the temperatures drop what you need to brace for to budget heat in your home. And we're just out uh, over a month out from Halloween. The celebration has already started, though. We'll tell you about some pop-up bars for the holiday season coming to Denver.